It's the Games and Grabs podcast. This week, we go through the games of July, give our thoughts on Fighter Fest, and go through this week's rather interesting Raw and SmackDown. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 98 of the Games and Grabs podcast. I'm Sonny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm less hot today. I know we, we spoke yesterday <laughs> and we, we tried to record the podcast yesterday, which didn't work because I'm a dumbass, basically. <laughs> and yesterday I was sitting in my pants, like recording, literally just sitting in pants and glasses. That's what, that's what was going nice. on yesterday. But today it's, uh, it's a lot cooler and I can deal with the weather a lot, a lot better. Yeah, so it's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, much more bearable. Yeah, I'm sure it's a lot better in your little sweat box as well today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's about. Yeah, just. fair enough. <laughs> So quite a bit to talk about this week. Yep, yep. So, well, we'll get straight into it with, uh, yeah, what have you been playing? Uh, well, indeed, mostly the same as last week, to be fair. Um, more Mortal Kombat 11, still grinding around that. Uh, still getting my ass beaten online by Scorpions. Yeah, I saw that you I saw, yeah. <laughs> I saw you tweet about the Scorpions thing. Yeah. Um, is it getting a little bit old now? Yeah, just a little bit. It's like literally, literally 90% at least of players I play against is the big Scorpion. If they don't pick Scorpion at first, once I beat them in the first round, they'll switch to Scorpion and then kick my ass. Because <laughs> it's like, uh, to me, the Scorpion just seems a little overpowered. Because like, he's got a teleport move, and he can combo that teleport move straight into like a massive, ridiculously overpowered combo. And it's like, how do you defend against that? You know, <laughs> it's like instantly, like, boom, you're dead. Like, yeah, I, I always find that the character on the cover is oh, yeah, like always the most overpowered and easiest to use. Yeah, seems like it. I mean, Which, the case in point here is Dead or Alive 6. Like, I think it's Kasumi that's on the front cover. Oh, uh, yeah. And she is quite simply the easiest to use and <laughs> easily the most overpowered character in the game as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I get them making, like, Scorpion, like, the easiest to use because, like, it's people's favourites. It's been around since the beginning. But, I mean, it's just it's just too easy because, like, especially playing as Jade as well because Jade, you play a lot, like, uh, from distance. You've got a lot of projectiles. Mm. And which that's pretty useless against Scorpion because it, it needs to throw a projectile to just teleport behind you and just kick your ass. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what do I do against that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not great. I mean, they won't nerf him or anything like that either because yeah. Scorpion, isn't it? I guess <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, I've bec- I've become that salty f- fighting game uh, online fighting game player. I'm now that I'm now that person. So you've become <laughs> everything that you didn't want to become when playing Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah, exactly. I've become, I've become <laughs> what I hate. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, we're playing a lot of Mario Maker Two again. Still enjoying uh, it. Fun. Yep. Still great. Still amazing. Um, love all the new things you can do. Love seeing all all, all the cool things people come up with. Mm. Um, and yeah, other than that, that's about it. But basically, this week I haven't played much more of Sekiro. Um, it's kind of on the back burner for now until I beat a couple of things. Okay. Uh, yeah, a bit more blood stained on stream. That's still good. Still a bit buggy. Found another bug. Um, so there's an ability you get which helps you swim faster underwater. Um, right. but I got that ability before I could actually swim. Um, so and I, I activated it while I was like floating on top of the water, and I then couldn't jump, and I was stuck in the water, just floating around. So I basically soft locked myself and I just couldn't move. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that was fun. Uh, luckily, there's an option to like suspend your game, so like say like saves where you are, and like goes back to the menu. So I did that, went back to the menu, came back in, and thankfully I was able to jump around and go back to normal. Oh good, <laughs> thank Christ. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's like every time I play it, there's like some new bug I find, which is, I mean, it's great. Like the game's great, and I love it. But I mean, it sounds it. I mean, you, the, the picture you paint a bit. I mean, it makes it sound great. Oh, yeah. Every time I every time I play, I find a new bug. But the game's great. I, I promise <laughs> it is. It is. It's like, really great. Like, <laughs> but yeah, the gameplay is excellent. Like it's like it's cool exploring, seeing all the cool enemies and things. But yeah, it's, it's super buggy. Hopefully they'll patch it. Patch so the it game's soon. great. Yeah, great game. Great game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. Uh, how about you? What you playing? Uh, I've been playing a couple of different bits this week, actually. Um, I've been playing a game called Judgment. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, which is uh, a game from Sega. Sega. And it's basically uh, from the people that make uh, the Yakuza series. Mm. And it, I, I, I think it's set in the same universe. I haven't quite figured it out yet. I don't think I've played probably enough to dig too deep into the story. Yeah, I think but, it is. Yeah, I think I've heard that. Yeah, um, but it's so cool, right? Um, what I love about this is the fact that it's got English dub. Nice. And the voice acting isn't terrible. In fact, really? it's anything but <laughs> terrible. It's really, really good. Okay. Um, 
it's I think it's more fun than Yakuza. I think Yakuza's great. I'm not slating Yakuza at all because it's oh. awesome. Uh, but I think Judgment's a little bit more fun. It's a bit more of a um, uh, fun sort of sense in the in the in the voice acting and the characters and the roles that they play and um, it's just a really great game. I mean, it is basically Yakuza. Yeah. With um with a few little tweaks. Cool. I'm okay with that. Um the character the main character is great. Basically he was a solicitor. Um then he quit that after sort of a case went awry. He is now like a, a detective who sort of takes private like a private detective, not like an official police officer or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, he takes private work and you know, it it's just really, really great. And it is partner um in the uh, detective agency is uh, ex yakuza, um, and it's it's just really really cool. The combat is the same as it would be, um, you know, in yakuza. So it's very much that fighting game style, like Virtua Fighter type thing. Nice, um, but that's not a bad thing. I, I no, just no. love the, I just love the way that it all fits together in those games. It's um, the 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 settings are always so beautiful, it's so colourful with the, all the neon lights and things like that. Awesome. Um, it's just it's it's set in modern times as well. Because obviously Yakuza, uh, apart from the new one, they're mostly set sort of uh, in the eighties. Oh yeah, sort of like early nineties type thing. But this is set in modern times. It's got like a uh, like a it's got a mobile phone and different apps and stuff on it. It's just it's really really cool. It's really stylish and it's super fun to play. And the story's great. Um, awesome. And it's just a great game. I I um I, I think it's one that's going to go under people's radar as well because I, I've not seen. It advertised much. I mean, it's something that's been on my radar for a while because I like Yakuza and I liked the look of the game. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, Same here. It, it's definitely one that I think people should check out because uh, I'm a big fan of it. And you don't need to play Yakuza to to understand it either. So obviously there's, there's a heap of Yakuza games, you know, <laughs> <Just a bit. laughs> including the sort of, you know, Zero and uh, Kiwami and Kiwami 2. And you know what? If, yeah. you, if you want to play Yakuza, but... Don't want to get confused by the story. Just play Judgment. It's the same thing with a new story, and you don't need to play Yakuza to to understand it. Fair play. Uh, yeah, Yakuza's always, always been one of those ones, all those series I wanted to get into. Um, I, I played the first two on PS2, uh, but now there's Kiwami One and Two, which I think it remakes, and then there's Zero, and then there's Four, Five, and Six on PS4, and the seventh coming soon, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's so many. It's like, well, where do I start? <laughs> I think. I think. The only ones on the PS4 are Zero, Kiwami 1 and 2, and then 6. Oh, really? I thought I had yeah. form, form five No, I'm pretty certain the other ones aren't on the PS4. Ah, weird. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably start with Kiwami 1. I don't know. I'll, start, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll say this, but I won't play it. <laughs> I think oh, yeah, I want to start with this and this, but I'll, I'll just rash it and play something else. Yeah. <laughs> I think the ones in between are, are PS3 games. I know 3 was a PS3 game. But you probably wait, I can't remember. Either way, they're all over the place. Just go play Just Yeah, <laughs> yeah famous dead, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> and, and I've also been playing a game called Sea of Solitude. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, this is um, a game from an independent studio that have been taken uh, under the wing of EA. Oh. And it's been released as an EA independent game, or EA original. Ooh, let's see. Um and it's about a girl who is struggling with uh, mental health problems and inner demons. And those demons um, appear in game as actual big monsters. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's, it, you know, it's, it's quite a, um, you know, a, a, a quite an emotionally charged game. Um, it's beautiful to look at. The art style really is amazing. Cool. Um there's a few little bugs in there, but nothing to really distract you away from how great this game actually is and how powerful it is. Um, there's no real combat to speak of. It's more of sort of, uh, you know, basically you, you find light to beat the monsters. Right, so you, okay. you find, I guess the, the message is essentially you find in positivity in yourself to defeat your inner demons. Yeah, cool. That sounds good. I mean, and that sounds super deep the way yeah, I just super. described it there, but um, <laughs> it's um, it's really beautiful and it's just um, yeah, it's really really great. I mean, I spent a couple of hours playing it last night, and I was just uh, already. I mean, I think to be honest, in about twenty minutes of me playing it, I was like, this is going to be one of my games of the year. Wow, that good? Yeah, I thought I, I think it's really really great, and a game that 
everybody should absolutely check out. I think, you know, for those that care about it, it's going to be an easy platinum as well. Ooh, even better. Um, but um, aside, that aside, I think it's absolutely worth playing because it's just, um, it's super powerful and it's gorgeous. And yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be, when we do the podcast at the end of the year, for the games of the year, I think it's definitely going to be in there. Awesome. Sounds good. I'll check that one out. For so sure. definitely check that out. And um, I've been playing pairs, but I don't need to talk about that. <laughs> but do you remember a game on the Mega Drive called Virtua Racing? Uh, yes, I think so. Is that the 3D-ish one? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Well, they've just re-released it on Switch. Right, You okay. know, like, they do these Sega Ages games, and they, like, bring them out on Switch and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, they've, it's still the same. They've obviously made the graphics a lot clearer. Right, okay. They're just Well, all they've done is up the re- resolution, basically. They've not changed anything about the game. Probably. And I played it last night, and I was, I was thinking, this is Mario Kart... And you know, other kart races aside, this is easily the best racing game on Switch. Really? Wow! <laughs> like, it's still so good. I was exp- I, when I fired it up. It's like five pound fifty. So if you remember it and you liked it, it's definitely worth checking out again because you'll be pleasantly surprised, like I was. And I put it on, and I was like, "Wait, this is this is that game from the Mega Drive? It, <laughs> it just feels so good and yeah. plays really, really good." And it, yeah, uh, it's. I was so surprised at how good it was. The only thing that's crap about it is there just isn't much to it. Or you, you know, you can. There's three courses, and you can pick between five laps, or you can do like a Grand Prix, which is like twenty laps. Oh yeah, and hmm. it's just it's so good. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. believe it. Like you can hear the shock in my voice now. I still can't believe how good it is. Wow, I get. I don't think I ever played it growing up, but it's one I've you know looked back and heard of. But uh, yeah, interesting. Like I played it, and I, I, I thought oh, five pound fifty is easily worth the risk. Yeah. So I bought it, and I was like, "This is going to be rubbish," and then I'll never play it again. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning thinking about it, thinking, "I really want to do a, a Grand Prix of twenty laps. See if I can actually make it through it." <laughs> nice. Like, it's just so good. Look, like, the way they've upres the graphics and just made it look like an old game made now. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. The race, the racing mechanics are great, and it just works so well. I don't remember it being that good on the Mega Drive. Yeah, it's, you know, you know, a game's good when you wake up the next day still thinking about it. Yeah, I could honestly, I, I can't, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. <Honestly. laughs> yes, so so uh, that's, that's, that's that's worth having a look at for sure. If if you know, if you remember it and you have fond memories of it, but or even if you don't, even if you thought that game was shit, I'm never even going to entertain it. Entertain it because you'll be like, oh wait, this isn't shit. It's actually really good. Maybe I'm just a douchebag. But <laughs> yeah, that, that was me this morning and last night. Fair play. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest, as far as gaming goes. Cool. Uh, no worries. Uh, so this is the first podcast of the month. So um, is. I think we forgot last month, but this month we're going to go through the games of July 2019. Woohoo! Uh, first one on the list is uh, Apex Legends Season 2, which came out on the second. Oh, uh, yeah, that's P- started now, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's PC, PS4, and x uh, We've also got Final Fantasy XIV Online Shadowbringers DLC expansion. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm so I, I, we have this all the time, right? But I'm so lost with this. It's, I'm so lost with Final Fantasy. Why are they still bringing expansions out for the older games? So, 14 is a MMO online RPG, like a lot like 11 was, um, and they're bringing, still bringing out expansions because it's still like a massive player base who plays these games. Um, and yeah, this adds, some, adds a bunch of new things. I think it adds some new jobs. I think I don't really look much into it, but I think Dark Knight is one of the new ones, which is in who was in the 11 and the other Final Fantasy. Um, sure. Yeah, but it looks, it looks cool. If I, I, it's one game I like super want to play, but I know if I do play, I'll be playing that and nothing else for the next seven years, pretty much like I did with Eleven. Um, the kind of game that just takes you into a dark hole and never, never, <laughs> never to be released. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it looks amazing. If you're into Final Fantasy fourteen, uh, check that out for sure. Um, also, on the same day, second of July. Um, interestingly, Red Faction Guerrilla remastered on the Switch. Why? Why? Yeah, that's what I thought. Is it, okay, why? <laughs> Who has asked for that? Um, that that's got to be a THQ Nordic thing, it's right? Probably. Did you prefer? I did like Red Faction Guerrilla when it first came out 27 years ago. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely a game of its time. I don't think it would hold up today, in my opinion. Hey, you say that, but look at well, Virtual Racing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What do I know? You never know. Yeah, that's the thing. We'll probably, put, we'll probably play Red Faction Guerrilla and be like, holy shit, this is like a well, revolutionary, so- amazing game. Yeah. We won't yeah. be doing that, but uh, I remember Red Faction Guerrilla. I remember it was just... All right. 
Yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's kind of cool. Like, you can, like, destroy things and have, like, realistic physics and, like, you can, like, break a thing with a building and the building will fall down realistically. And, like, oh, that's pretty cool. But basically, just start the game again. Yeah, again. yeah, that's <laughs> Um, cool. Uh, so next stage, like third, we've got another expansion. Uh, just just calls for Los De- Demonios. De- De- blah, blah, blah. Los Demonios. Los Demonios. I'm it wrong. Uh, that's coming out on PC, PS4, I'm, next I'm 100% certain that it isn't pronounced the way you just pronounced it. Probably not. The Los, D- yeah. maybe. The rest of it, no. <laughs> yeah, De- Demonios. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, July the 4th, next day. Uh, Stranger Things 3, the game on everything. Yeah, it looks quite cool actually. It's got if you've ever seen Stranger Things, it's basically like a it's, it looks like a pixel art type game. Oh wow, okay, cool. I haven't seen I haven't seen Stranger Things, but oh, have you not? Uh, no. Oh, I think you'd really like it, but you know, finding time to watch these things is very difficult. Uh, yeah, exactly. I haven't seen much, much TV these days. That's fair. <laughs> uh, same day again. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch? Plans it right this time. Coming out on Switch on the same day. Fucking hell! It's yeah. <laughs> been like Any- PS4 and everything else. Yeah, a, a, if you if you want a game and but you've only got a switch, just wait. It'll be there eventually. <laughs> Pretty much. I think that yeah. was uh, last month's PlayStation Plus game, wasn't it? I, I think so. It. Yeah, I think yeah. I've had it for a while. I think I've got it on Xbox. So I'm not sure. Cool. Uh, yeah, very good things. So it's probably worth checking out. Is that the Walking Simulator one? I think so. Yeah, yeah I think it, I think I think it's really cool. Um, but I've not really played it that much to judge it. I remember playing it and thinking, yeah, this is really cool. And then I got stuck and I was like, okay. And I never played it again. Fair play. Yeah, I've heard really good things about it. I want to check it out. I think it's only short. So I have a look at that at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, slide four. A lot, lot, of, uh, lot of games coming out that day. Busy day. Independence uh, Day. Called, yeah, well, of course. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> a game called Wonder Blade on PC. Shrug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what that is, but yeah. Uh, July the 5th, we have Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle on everything. That's definitely got a. That's definitely got an audience. Um, I think oh, yeah. that'll do quite well. I think the first one did really well. Yeah, exactly. um, I, in fact, huge. it must have because it has a sequel. But yeah, Attack on Titan, huge um, sort of uh, anime series, isn't it? So people yeah. are really into that. So cool. Yep. Well, cool Good for stuff. those people. Yep, yep. Uh, game we just talked about, Sea of Solitude, same day on PC, PS4, and Xbox. Definitely get that game of the year. One of. Cool. Nice. Uh, another game on Xbox. Uh, they are billions on July fifth. Right. Shrug. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. Um, we have uh, interestingly, uh, we've got a game called Bear With Me of the Lost Robots on July 9th. This is on everything. And How was Bear spelled? Uh, B E A R, like a bear, like actual bear, right? Yeah, okay. that's pretty. That gimmick. What's that and, coming on? Uh, everything PC, PS4, Xbox, and Switch, right? Uh, also, the same day, another Bear With Me, the complete collection. <laughs> what <laughs> oh, I guess it's been one, one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unless they're unless they're really confident, they're just bringing out the game of the year edition straight after they bring <laughs> yeah. out the normal edition. This game's so good and it's going to do so well that the game of the year edition is going to come out the day after. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have on July 9th um, one of our favorite series, uh, Cinnamon Kagura Peach Ball on oh, Switch. For fuck's sake! They make another one. Oh, <laughs> they keep coming. Switch. Oh, come on! <laughs> Imagine your kids like scrolling through the uh, the Switch store. Oh, this looks, Mum, Dad, this looks really great. Oh, you like beach volleyball? Yeah, sure. And then <laughs> they load it up, and it's just asses and like weird panty shots on the kids. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, uh, I remember that wonderful episode of Why Do I Own This that you did, and I've never laughed so hard at a game yeah. in my life. Yeah, why do I own that? Oh, boobs. That's why. Um, ah, right. Yeah, boobs. <laughs> right, I get it now. Um, <laughs> and we have same day. Um, they are billions on PS4. Just oh, right. It. Wait, that, yeah, that, so that came out on Xbox maybe like a few days ago. Uh, yeah. So it must be coming to PS4, maybe like a staggered release or something. I yeah. don't know. So, cool. Um, we have a game called, oh, Jesus, uh, Soul Seraph Shrug on PC, PS4, Xbox, <laughs> and Switch. Soul Seraph Seraph. <laughs> Pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> so most of these games, by the way, that, you, that we can't pronounce and you've never heard of, nobody will buy. Yeah, nobody's heard of them. They just they just exist in their own little space. Yeah, they they come out. You, you look at the thumbnail on the on the store that you're buying it off, and you think, oh, that looks pretty cool. You click the you click it, open it up, and it's just some garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's just some random garbage. Yeah, it's for the toxic companies. Uh, anyway, then we have a game same day. Uh, it's another game I've never heard of called Space Dance on PC. Wait, well, who's buying that? I don't know. Uh, 
cool. Then we have a game called uh, Blazing Chrome on everything again on July uh, July 11th. Yeah. No idea again. Uh, I'm going to start skipping some of these. Um, then we have oh, <laughs> July 12th, again, I have heard of and looks pretty awesome. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2. Oh, okay. That's a big one. Yeah, that's pretty big. Uh, played the first one a while back. Didn't get too uh, hugely into it. But it's a game which was very fun. And uh, we might check it out. Sequel. Apparently, they've uh, fixed a lot of the uh, little niggles people had with the first game. It uh, looks super cute as well. Um, yeah. It's something that I actually wanted to have a look at but never did. Um, so I might wait until this one goes cheap. Or if the first one goes cheap, um, I might pick the first one up maybe. I don't know. Yeah. It's one it looked I played, good though. Like, yeah, definitely. I played the, when I played, played the first one. I was like, oh, yeah, it's super good. I'm going to play loads of this. And then just got distracted by something else, as I so often do. And then you go back. But, yeah, hopefully I'll find time for the second one. Cool. That's a big release. Not oh, really yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, then we have same day, uh, God Eater 3 get released on Switch for some reason. Sure. Yeah. I think that's like the one like the one that's sort of like Monster Hunter but worse. Ah, right, yeah. okay. Monster, <laughs> Monster Hunter but good. worse. What a review. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> did you see that um the first Devil May Cry has been released on Switch? Oh yeah, I did see that actually, yeah. Interesting. I saw it on the I store think, yesterday and I was like, why? Yeah, but then why not all three? Like you got the H C remake on BS4 and everything else. Why not yeah. all I think Which? Capcom are steadily releasing their back catalogue on Switch because you know, you know they just released the Resident Evil games. Oh yeah, yeah. All at thirty quid a pop, by the way, which is ridiculous. Oof, that's pretty insane. They well, I mean, like Resident Evil Six as well. Like really? You want that? Say well, five, five and six are coming. They were announced at E three. Yeah. But why? Who's gonna pay thirty quid for it? Yeah, it's a five game. maybe but six? Ugh. No, I wouldn't even I wouldn't pay thirty quid for five. Especially oh, no, no. wouldn't pay thirty quid for four. That would pay thirty quid awesome. no. But yeah, I mean was amazing. But yeah, yeah it was amazing, good. but they should have been released at like fourteen ninety nine at most each. Yeah, seriously. Or then a bundle for like, I don't know, for all of them for like 40 quid, maybe. Yeah. But 30 quid each, that's insane. Just have them on Switch. No way. Yeah. The Nintendo is weird that I need to... Like yeah, it's something that it's something they definitely need to figure out because um, I saw a tweet from Viz yesterday actually oh. saying that he uh, he bought the new Pokemon game for his for his little boy, but Pokemon oh, yeah. Let's Go. And it was either £33 delivered with, the, you know, the next day or forty nine ninety nine digital. Oof. You still forty nine ninety nine after, after all this time. The new Pokemon <laughs> game on the way. You'd think they want to sell them cheap to get people hyped for the next game. Wait, but... It's ridiculous. It's like I was scrolling through the Nintendo store last night before I bought Virtua Racing. Zelda, um, the Breath of the Wild, it's fifty nine ninety nine digital. Oof. Is that... Does that come in the DLC, or is that just on its own? No, that's on its own. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I just don't understand. Like, to, I, 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 I'm, I'm a massive fan of digital, but, you know, you have to make it, um, you have to make it viable for the consumer, because, you, I, don't get me wrong, Zelda's still expensive in the shops, but it's still £10 cheaper than what it is digital. Yeah, yeah. And you get a box and a little cartridge. You know, I know, yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but... <laughs> It's crazy. I just don't understand Nintendo's logic with uh, digital pricing or pricing in general. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, very. All right, so another game that'll yeah. be just expensive, I'm sure, on Switch, but a game I'm quite looking forward to. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black oh, Order. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really. Oh, yeah. That, I forgot that that was this month, actually. I'm really mm. excited for that one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the first two were great. I can't wait for that. Yeah, um, I hope it's good, though. I, I've, there's part of me that's a little bit concerned. Yeah, yeah. Because it's on Switch only. And now I'm sure they bought the rights to it and you know that's really not going to be what the issue is. I'm just slightly concerned because of how shit Marvel versus Capcom the last one was. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you were right. yeah, that wasn't super great, was it? No, and I, I love the first two Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. Yeah, me too. But there's something a there's something that I'm a little bit concerned about with this. And I can't put my finger on it because as far as I can see it looks great, but Marvel vs. Capcom looked great, and then it came out, and it was garbage. So, yeah. I'm I'm worried, but at the same time, I'm also excited. Yes. Maybe it's decent we can do some sort of carb stream at some point. Definitely, yeah. 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 Definitely, yeah. If we're both going to get it, we may as well stream it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, same day, or no, next day, no, a few days later, uh, Beyond, <laughs> Sol- Beyond Two Souls comes out on PC. Why? I don't know. I mean, why not? I mean, you know, PC players... If they don't own a PS4 and stuff, and wait, you know, wanted to play Beyond Two Souls, then you might get a chance. To be honest, yeah. I think they've just recently bought Heavy Rain out as well, so on PC. Oh yeah, they did, yeah, didn't they? 
Interesting. Cool. That's fine. I guess, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I obviously, you know, I've had a PS3 and a PS4, so I played it, but um, it's taken long enough to get to PC. I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, like, why did that come out five years ago? Ah, yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Maybe hey, even longer than that, actually. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and another one, interestingly, on July 24th, EA Access finally over to PS4. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's really good for PS4 players to, mm. to finally get access to that service. It's really, really good service, and the price is it's like three ninety nine a month or twenty pounds for a year. So, uh, the fact that you get access to, um, you know, a, a, an awesome back catalogue of you know EA games. So if you've not played some of them, you know, go back and play them for a very little. Plus, you get a free trial and stuff, and you get access to EA games um, like seven days before they come out. You get like a ten act, ten hour trial. Really? Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty good. And the trophies and achievements and stuff do unlock during the trial as well. So nice. uh, that's really, really cool and definitely worth looking at. The only thing that you're not going to get is the backwards compatibility stuff that you get on Xbox because obviously PS4 isn't backwards compatible oh, unless it's streamable through uh, PlayStation Now. But um, otherwise, great service, definitely worth looking at. Cool. I suppose more companies don't do that because it seems like that's a good deal. And clearly they're making money off it. Um, so yeah, I suppose more people aren't jumping on that. Well, it's like Ubisoft jumped on the bandwagon, didn't they, at E3? And that's come, that, their version of it's coming to PC. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. And Stadia, uh, which we spoke about a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. So mm. uh, for me, that's a big coup for Stadia, the fact that they're going to have Ubisoft's you know, back catalogue streamable on their platform, whereas other consoles aren't going to have it, which is a real shame because um, I do think there's a market for that, to be honest. I mean, EA Access yeah. is clearly the, um, you know, the, the, the catalyst for it, but... I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe in the future. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Um, cool. And uh, then uh, next day, July twenty fifth, we have uh, Killer Kill Eve L F I F. Some of that. Great. Uh, that sounds it, awesome. Whatever. Yeah, it is. It, that's a, based on an anime. I think it came out on PS four a little while ago. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's coming out on PC. Uh, fair enough. Uh, another game I'm looking forward to. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses comes out on Switch on July twenty sixth. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that would be great, actually. Um, I saw, yeah, again, when I was looking through the store yesterday, I saw it there for pre-order, and, uh, yeah, I'm sure that would be good. Uh, it looks looks nice. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe the first one I've played since the 3DS uh, one that came out a long time ago. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I love that one, so definitely go to this. Cool, yeah. Um, oh, that's good. I mean, th- that would be massive as well. Definitely. Is that just Switch? Oh, uh, yeah, Switch only. It's a Nintendo property thing. Of course, yeah. So uh, that's going to be huge. And again, that's, you know, another reason why the Switch is great, because you do get cool games like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, another cool game coming out this month, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, which I forgot existed. Jesus, is that this month as well? <laughs> yeah, July 26th again. Uh, that'll be cool. That'll, that will be cool. Yep, yep. Coming out on literally everything, PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Interesting. There's a PSVR one coming out as well. Is that this month as well? Oh, really? Um, It doesn't mention it on here, but... Oh, okay. Be. I'll be down for that. Yeah, um, it's only. I think it's only like a, a short experience, but there is a PSVR one coming out. Cool, excellent. Let me some PSVR. Mm, um, definitely. We have uh, a game called The Blackout Club on PS3, PS4, and Xbox. PS3. Uh, P, uh, no, PS4. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, PC, PS4, Xbox. Oh, PC. Sorry. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Mutant Year Zero: See the Evil, which I've heard of, but I can't put my finger on. Um. Yeah. It's um, what's that coming out on Switch or something? Uh, everything, PC, PS4, Xbox, Switch. I'm pretty certain it's already out on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, okay. Well, it's definitely out on Xbox One because I'm sure it's on Game Pass, but um, I think it might be coming to Switch. It's um, Honestly, I actually don't know what it is, but I've seen it. I think it's popular amongst mm. a certain group of people, but uh, I've heard of it definitely, and I, yeah, cool. Cool, neat. And last one I have on here is uh, Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown DLC, some airplane DLC. I thought it was going to be a full game, but no, just got some ADFX01 Morgan DLC, whatever that is. Ace Combat 7's yeah. already out. Yeah, I can say, yeah, it's just some DLC. Yeah, that, I mean, those games, I'm sure they're great, but they don't really interest me. But again, yeah. there's an audience for that too, so... Yeah, fair play. Um, sure, enjoy it, I guess. I, th- I saw yeah. that Oscar was playing it. Oscar, uh, when it came out, she was playing uh, Ace Combat 7 and Loving Life. Oh, actually, right. I thought you said Oscar. I like, who's Oscar? <laughs> I did say Oscar. <laughs> it, it, never mind, don't worry about it. Oh, right, you mean like O-S-C-A-R or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Um, but yeah, that's about it. That's it for uh, July. And uh, yeah, a few big ones in there. Yeah, a lot of crap. I mean, come on. A lot of garbage. Yeah, I might start skipping a lot all of the ones crap. I've heard of. Yeah. But, uh, to be honest, I like that you read them out because it's it's funny. Yeah, it's fair play. Yeah, yeah. It's funny to see what games people aren't going to buy. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> cool. So as, as we can, I think I'm going to Jesus Christ. I think as we think 
I fucking never mind. Biggest game of the month, <laughs> definitely uh, Senran Kagura, I think. <laughs> yeah. 100% definitely. definitely that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest game of the month is either... Um, it's To be honest, it's a Switch game, which whatever it is. So it's either Marvel Ultimate Alliance, mm-hmm. um, Dragon Quest Builders 2. Is that on everything? Um, let's have a look. Where was it? Uh, it's PS4 and Switch. Okay, or or Fire Emblem. It's one of them. Yeah, definitely. Um, or Wolfenstein. I think it'll be big. Uh, that'll be big, but I don't think it'll be as big as the three mentioned. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I'll probably say Fire Emblem for me for sure. Because I, th- I think the Wolfenstein one is not a full game, is it? It's like a it's a it's a budget title for a start, so it's not it? it's not like um, the New Order or the the Colossus one that the, that came out recently. It's not a full one. It's um, uh, I think it's um, it's a shorter game. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Like, yeah. do you remember um, the old blood that came out after the new order? Oh yeah, okay. I think I think it's going to be something like that, like a standalone, uh, shorter experience. Got yeah, okay, that's fair enough. It'll still be good because obviously oh, yeah. those games are great. So, absolutely, yeah, cool, excellent. As it was July, great, good, um, uh, all right month, I guess. Yeah, really good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of um, black holes, actually, because you remember. <laughs> We uh, obviously, you know, that Final Fantasy fourteen game that still bringing out DLC for for whatever. Um, um, basically, I've I've just bought Two Point Hospital. Oh yeah, and that's a game that you, I'm I'm certain that you can get um, get lost in, like get straight down a black hole with that. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember playing EGX, and I thought, yeah, this is really cool. And they gave me a free T-shirt, which I'm actually wearing now. Nice. And um, I thought, yeah, that'd be really cool. Maybe I'll get it one day. And I thought I've sat here. I've sat yesterday at work thinking I really want to get Two Point Hospital. Let's create a new Steam account and just buy it. So I bought it, and it was like it was in the Steam sale because Steam is cool for sale. So um, I bought two PC games yesterday. Nice, get the uh, PC gamer. Yeah, so, so uh, building, your own, building your own rig anytime now. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically I'm, I'm only going to play games that my laptop can handle. But um, mm-hmm. I bought Two Point Hospital, and I, I just bought the Steam version of Fire Pro Wrestling World because it was really cheap. Nice, and oh. my virginity grew back. <laughs> oh yeah, fair play. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so that's the one that's got sort of based on theme hospital, isn't it? Back in the day. Yeah, basically it's a Sega game, and uh, they've based, it's like the spiritual successor to Theme Hospital. Um, I've heard nothing but good things. I, like I said, I have played it myself. I played it at EGX, and it was great. Um, but you know, when you're playing it, you know, one of these things you don't get very long. And <laughs> yeah, it's it looks great. It looked to be honest, it's basically Theme Hospital, but with a different name. Yeah, bad play, play. Yeah, bad play. It looks awesome. Um, I probably play that if I had time, but I don't. So yeah. Yeah, fair I haven't got time either. <laughs> I don't even know why I bought it, but um, <laughs> it looks great. So yeah, good times. But, as you say, it's one of those games you just get lost in forever. But uh, yeah, <laughs> looks fun. I like those kind of games. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I like those sort of builder games. Like um, I like Jurassic Park Builder that came out on the consoles last year. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Uh, sunk a bit of time into that. I like I like things like that because you know they're they're just simple games to play. And you can just lose a lot of time to them, and you don't really have to think too much about them. Yeah, yeah, that's the best thing about them. Just uh, sit yeah. there and just play. Yeah, basically. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. So that's what it gave me for this week. Yep. Um, so wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. So um, AEW's Fighter Fest happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, think what did you week, think to it? Uh, yeah, I liked it. I think last week you might have gotten Fighter Fest and Fight for the Porn confused or mixed up. No, I don't think so. No. Okay, no? Never mind. It's a, it's a, uh, Chris well, Stacey on the, Discord. Fight for the Fallen. Oh, it's because I said, but I mentioned both and how crap the names were. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, and they were sort of uh, counter arguing, which is fine. Ah, um, but Fight for Fest was sadly just gone. Fight for the Fallen's in like two weeks. Got you. Okay. Sounds good to me. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. It was a good show. A lot of good matches. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I thought it was fine. I mean, I don't think it was, I don't think it set the world on fire. No, I don't think it was as good as like All In or anything like that. No, no, I don't think it was. Uh, what you mean, double or nothing? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they all will blend into one. Like, no, all like, in was one, wasn't it? I that's the one I haven't seen. That was yeah. one last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fight, fight the best for the fall in. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but I, I thought it was okay. Um, I just thought it was okay. Uh, I, I can't really say much more than that about it. But um, there was a few interesting little things that happened. Yeah. Um, Cody Rhodes took a clean he- chair shot to the head. <sighs> Yeah, not a van alert, personally. I know they said they gimped the chair, but clearly it didn't work because uh, poor Cody was bleeding quite heavily. 
Yeah. Um, so you can give it the chair all you want, but if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. And that's still the problem that you have with taking a clean, a clean chair shot. But, um, I understand that they are trying to go in a certain direction and differentiate themselves from the, the, the competition on the same scale, which of course is WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think you need to do that. I mean, it was, it was very heavily criticized online by people, yeah. um, you know, from all sort of different sides of the wrestling community. Um, and I don't know. I just, I get where they're trying to go, but they don't need to do that kind of thing to get there. No, definitely. Um, yeah. What, knowing what we know now about, you know, the dangers that were taking too many shots at the head. Um, yeah, it's, it's done. You don't want to, you don't want to risk, um, uh, injuring yourself and making making things hard for yourself in the future yeah and, yeah i mean even the uh even the commentary team alluded to like oh maybe we're gonna have to do the uh you know an imp- a, con- a concussion test they used their term for it and i can't remember what it is yeah. but um oh maybe we're gonna have to do a concussion test like even like alluding to it, it's like that it's not a good thing that you would have to do that you know right <laughs> no no yeah it's, it's definitely a bad thing like wrestlers have been put on the shelf for concussion related injuries like a uh, um, Corey Graves, for example, had to retire mm. because of it. Um, we just look at like, Benoit, what I'm doing. Well, well, you know, one too many <laughs> shots to the head. and uh, I mean, you know, different sport and different circumstances. But, you know, Muhammad Ali, he had to retire from boxing because, you know, one fight too many, one, you know, too many blows to the head. And it can, it can cause serious damage. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that a gimmicked chair is, you know, it's, it's going to happen in this instance, but it, it could. Yeah, and I think that worth, is where much. no, no, absolutely not. And I think that's where the problems that people had with it come into play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the thing I wasn't a huge fan of in, in this show was like the time limits. It's like I don't really understand why they had time limits there. Like the match with Cody and the uh, the guy Darby Allen. Yeah. Um, it's like ended with Cody uh, basically pinning him for the three count, but the time limit ended. It's like what does that do for either of them? You know, because it's clear, clearly. Um, uh, Darby had lost because he would have gotten three if it wasn't a time limit, and then Cody doesn't also, also doesn't win because the time ran out. So they both just lose basically. It's like doesn't do anything with both either of them. It's um, I actually disagree with you a little bit here. Okay, uh, respectfully, obviously, but <laughs> um, I actually don't mind the time limit thing. Okay, uh, I uh, because of the effort that Darby Allen put in during that match and it made him look so good. And he, I think the point that they were trying to get across is that, that, that this, I think, cause I think Darby Allen has a big future in AEW. Oh yeah. So I think the fact that he took Cody to the limit and Cody didn't beat him mm-hmm. is, um, uh, is, is where they were sort of looking to go with it. So I get the time limit thing and I don't mind it. And I, I think that's, that's the stance that they were looking to get from it. Fair. That's fair. But, uh, you know, again, that's where opinion comes in. It's, yeah, people exactly. have their own opinions about it. If that's not what you want to see, then I get it completely. But yeah. for me, I, I, just, I, I quite like I quite like that. I quite like there's, you know, a, a, a limit. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's different. I know I can see that. But, uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, I'm not sort of saying that you're wrong because, yeah, you know, that's your opinion for, for definite. I just think, I think that's the way they were going with it. I think Darby Allen, I think we'll see a lot of him when uh, AEW sort of starts having TV. Oh, yeah. I mean, he looked great. I mean, it's a really, cool, really fun match. That's really fun match, yeah. And then it ended with the, uh, I see, what I didn't like is the, uh, and again, I it's quite, it was quite old school, so I understand why they did it. But um, I don't like that Cody sort of pinned him just as the time limit was expiring. Yeah, because weird. it makes it look. It, like it you, makes it makes it look planned, basically, um, <laughs> yeah. for lack of any sort. And, and obviously, it was. But which one turns out wrestling isn't real? Wait, what? A wrestling is definitely real, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know what I mean. It made it look like two staged. Yeah, yeah. Like they they fought mean. and beat the crap out of each other to that point. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there's three, there's two seconds left, and Cody goes for the pin. One, two, time limit's over. You can't win. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they should have just. Strange. I think they should have just fought until the twenty minutes ran out, or however yeah, that long. Kind it of was. Makes sense. Yeah. But, I uh, that. Uh, otherwise, I like the time limit. I, d- I, you know, it. Yeah, it's fine. I like it. Lovely. And this is where the uh, Sean Spears, Tom, Tim Donnellinger, attack Cody with a chair. Um, I'm a bit worried as well for Sean Spears because the reason he got over in the first place was because of his gimmick. 
and now seemingly he's lost that gimmick and now he's going for some, something else. I'm a bit afraid when he actually has a wrestling match, he's not going to be as good as people think. Yep, I understand that. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't, it could be, think... well, be like, too amazing, but uh, who knows. I think Sean Spears is uh, a good wrestler. Yeah. But the 10 thing, it was the crowd that got him over. Yeah, It for wasn't sure. himself that got himself over. If you, if you understand what I mean by that. Yeah, totally, yeah. The 10, the ten chance and things like that. Yeah, so the, the 10 chance were everywhere because the fans could. Like, yeah, oh, exactly, yeah. Look at this thing we can, look at this thing we can annoy everyone with. This is, yeah, and now we're going to do it. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, this is happening because of Ty Dillinger. Let's, uh, let's push him forward a little bit. But, you know, before that, he, was, he wasn't doing anything spectacular on NXT. In fact, he was losing every match pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. But then when he, he did come to some sort of prominence in NXT, he didn't really do anything of any worth there either. Yeah. And then he came up to the main roster. He was number 10 in the Raw Rumble for, I think, two years in a row. Yeah, I think so. And um, I think the first time was cool. The second time, predictable. But then he was on the main roster and did absolutely nothing. And this is the thing, right? Wrestling fans do sort of determine what happens in wrestling for the most yeah, part. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so I understand... Mean w champion. Well, exactly. <laughs> and oh, Daniel Bryan, like, getting to that sort of level as well with the fans yeah. sort of uh, pushing him to... I mean, Daniel Bryan obviously is great, but, um, no you know, the fans sort of, with the yes chance and whatnot, pushed him to that next level. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And the, the fans... So the fans got Ty Dillinger to that next level and then we're like, oh, you know what? We don't care about this anymore. <laughs> yeah pretty much it's a shame um, don't get me wrong I do think he's a good wrestler and if, if booked well anybody can be good in their role oh yeah of course um, but I, I, I'm with you here. I mean I've never thought that uh, Ty Dillinger slash Sean Spears is the next big superstar and I still don't think it now no. I understand why um, AEW have brought him in but yeah uh, the thing is, he uh, seemed to be going for like a more serious sort of uh, thing, which is like completely opposite of what he had in WWE. And I think I think people want to see, you know, the 10 chance. They want to see like WWE's tied in into but better, basically. But now it's gone for this like super emo looking <laughs> tough guy. Yeah. Um, they, they, yeah. They, well, they want to see WWE's Ty Dillinger, but not in WWE. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Thing is, I think if he'd have won a major championship in WWE, the fans wouldn't have been happy about it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because they know he's not great. Uh, like imagine if he'd have like come not come onto the main roster. Like, hey, look, if he'd have won the NXT title, people would have gone mental for it. Hmm. But is he really that level above where he can step up to the main roster and be the Intercontinental Champion, be the United States Champion? Yeah. No, I don't think. I think is the answer to that question. I don't think he is. No, definitely. Um, yeah, we don't. Still, we could be wrong. He could have a match with Cody and be on like the best match of the year, but. It hey, is. look, we are wrong so much. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I want everybody to succeed. It's not that I'm trying to shit on the guy and bury him or anything like that. No, no, of course not. Uh, obviously, we're, we're, what we're doing is just giving our opinion on what we think of him as um, a, a wrestler, really. Yeah, pretty much, exactly. Um, so many things didn't work for him in the build-up <laughs> to the 10 thing, and then it's, it's almost like he's starting again. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah, bad bad to him. Good luck, better luck to him. Yeah, of course. Um the thing I did like uh, was the uh, uh, the elite versus um, the other guys, uh, Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid. Yes, uh, that's very cool. They're coming out dressed as uh, uh, Ryu and Ken, the Street Fighter and Akuma. Yeah. Uh, interesting, interestingly, on this uh, website, it says uh, Ryu and Ken, the Street Fighter, and Akuma from Tekken. Uh, that's not <laughs> that's not where it's from. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, Akuma is in Tekken. He was, yeah, it was in that, that that one game, wasn't he? It's in Tekken Seven, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for, he's a Street Fighter character. <laughs> there is no no two ways about it. It's Street Fighter. Ah, uh, yeah. This is what a website. Uh, what, what website is that? It's uh, Wrestle Talk. Right, great. Yeah, see you guys. <laughs> yeah, good, good facts. Wrestle Talk. Come on now. This is, this is, do do your fucking research. Jesus Christ. Did, did you have a I can't be, well? Yeah, I think I think they do, and and I they oh, you know I don't like when people don't do their research on stuff. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It just makes them look dumb. Wrestle Talk, yeah. you look fucking dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry, actually. I couldn't care less, but uh, <laughs> you, you look dumb, and that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really good match. Um, 
I like at one point they did like a Hadouken task bar, which is like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. At that point, uh, Jim Cornette had a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Not bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, there was no way that it wasn't going to be great. Oh yeah. The, uh, every, but it, it was special. really great. I thought, um, I mean, I mean, the Lucha Brothers are awesome. Laredo Kid, clearly great. Um, and obviously the Elite are, are next level competitors as far as professional wrestling goes. Yeah. But yeah, sure. I thought um, I thought, it was, I thought the, the match was great, yeah. Yeah, really good. I love the little Kenny Omega's like, references and his, his like, moves, like the one-winged angel to finish show, which is a final magic reference. And, like the V-Trigger knee and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. Well, I like him. Uh, side, quick side note on Kenny Omega, actually. Um, mm-hmm. I saw like, in an interview he said that he um, an AEW game will happen. Oh, yeah? Nice. And um, he... Uh, will do everything in his power or words to that effect to bring back the AKI engine. Oh, nice. That would be cool. Imagine if we get an AEW game on PS4, Xbox One, and whatever else um, with the AKI engine. Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh, man. Please, so, please make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> I, so need it. I need yeah. it. I need it. I need it. Need. Of course, the other one, uh, the main event, main event everyone seems to have loved, uh, loved was the unsanctioned match between John Moxley and Joey Janela? Yeah. Um, for me, it wasn't great. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't the best match of the night, I don't think. I know that it could have been better, but I know why it wasn't better. <laughs> why is that? Because it was on mainstream professional wrestling. Yeah. It, was in a, it was in a very polished product. If they were given the free reigns on the indies... Mm-hmm. They would have fucking murdered each other. It would have <laughs> yeah. been so bad that it, it, you know that they'd, they'd have really gone to town. But you can't have a death match in WWE or AEW or Impact or anywhere that is um, heavily financially backed. I think is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, if they go, if they go to death match, it would put people off. Like I'm very screamish when we come to these things, mm-hmm. and I'll be the one. I'll be like looking away. It's like nope, can't see it. Nope. <laughs> I mean, me, me personally, I'm fine with the death match, but it has to be in the right setting. Yeah. It has to be done in the right context. Um, but I don't think there's a place for it. And I said this on Discord as well. Uh, I don't think there's a place for it. I think there's a place for hardcore matches. Mm, definitely. Uh, and gimmicky matches like that. But there's not a place for a death match on a... Um, like, AEW is a financially backed company who will be looking to gain sponsors. Sponsors will not want to sponsor something that has people smashing light tubes over the other one's head. So I can understand why it was... Don't get me wrong, it was crazy, and they did what they did, um, you know, within the confines, you know, of the company. And that's fine. So what they did is they put on a great hardcore match. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think some of the hardcore fans were expecting more. That's fair. I think that might be where the disappointment sets in. But hey, the internet loved it. I thought it was good. Uh, but the problem is, earlier that week, I'd call, I'd done commentary for a death match oh. between Clint Margera and uh, Big Joe from DNA. Oh yeah, and they fucking killed each other, right? They, <laughs> they went completely <laughs> mental on each other, this right? And then I watched that and I was like, well, this is pretty tame. <laughs> yeah, because I've been, I've been spoiled that, yeah. with, with with it. But um, just... hey, look. They did what they could do, as uh, you know, given the show that they're on, and that's fine. Yeah, that's fair. And like the uh, barefoot under the thumb sacks, that's why I was like, oh god, no. Yeah, some things are a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was crazy. It was it was good fun, but um, I think it could have been. It was what I, thing is also. Uh, I like I like the thing where the lights went out and then they came back on and it was unsanctioned. Oh, yeah. But they had an AW ref, an AW ring announcer, the AW commentary team. So it was a fucking AW match. There wasn't yeah, just no point. unsanctioned about it. It's, yeah, but, that's, hey, look, that's wrestling. 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 But that, that, it is what it is. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so for me, the best match of the night is probably um, uh, the uh, Kenny Omega and the uh, Elite versus Lucha Bros. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I thought yeah. Um, I thought Darby all uh, Darby Allen uh, against Cody Rhodes was great as well. To be yeah. actually, to be honest, my match of the night was the Triple Threat Women's match. I thought that was brilliant. Oh yeah, that was good actually. Yeah, yeah. That told a brilliant story all the way yeah. through it because obviously um, Nyla Rose was b- being built as you know the, the the you know the main player in that match, the one that they want to push forward, and that is going to be the case definitely. Oh, yeah. But she didn't win the match, and that I loved. Yeah. That's, good. that's what I really liked about it because she was dominant throughout the match against these two girls and she didn't win. And then she got hers, she got her props after the match. Yeah. 
Definitely. And I, yep. I, I just enjoyed the, I enjoyed the way the whole thing played out. And I thought it was really cool. So, yeah, that that was my personal match of the night. But uh, a lot of it, you know, most of the show was really great. Yeah, definitely. And then a highlight for me was uh, SCU just being a really good heel. I know an excellent heel. So mm. good. <laughs> you mean Christopher uh, Daniels? Or? Um, S- yeah, I, can't, I think I can't remember his proper name. S- SCU, like the super douchebag sort of. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, MJF. Uh, sure, that one. That MJF, yeah. Yeah, SCU, yeah, yeah, sorry, the, uh, SCU are the the faction. Christopher Daniels, yeah, sorry, uh, Scorpio thought, Sky, thought, and yeah. Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Sorry, I couldn't get mixed up. Uh, MGF, yeah, he's great. The White Alberto Del Rio, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I think he's good. He's gonna be. He's gonna be a huge, huge star. Yeah, definitely. Um, and he's gonna be. He's definitely gonna be a flag waver for AEW for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, what's the what's up with the uh, librarian weird gimmick? With it's the, crap. Uh, it's what it is. Yeah, it's strange. It's awful. It's so, so awful. Um, I, I, I don't like it. Nobody likes it. And I think it should go away. Yeah. It's another one that's like, she got over it in NXT because of a weird gimmick. Yeah, she uh, got over it in NXT counts. because of Enzo and Cass doing Correct, yeah, pretty much. Enzo and Cass things. Yeah. And I don't think Lever Bates is a great wrestler. And yeah. I think this gimmick is not going to help that cause. No. Very strange. Uh but yeah, that's that. Um, good show overall. Not amazing. Not as good as uh, the last one, but it's fun. Yeah. Um, one thing, I know we've sort of talked about this in a real arse end kind of way, but the triple threat on the pre-show is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tag match. I can't remember if I watched it or not. I think I did. If you oh, didn't, yeah, go and watch it because it was awesome. Best friends versus, versus uh, Pro Party. And SCU. Uh, no. SCU, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, very good. Awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I don't think it was as good as Stomping Grounds. Mm, yeah, maybe. I think. Yeah, maybe. I think I agree with that. I think. But the hey, same, look, I, 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 same level, maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I mean, I think AEW are very much in their infancy, and I, I'm looking forward to to them going to TV, and oh, yeah. then I think that's when we'll see the real evolution of AEW. Because at the minute, obviously, they're just throwing random matches together, um, throwing throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks, and you can see that they are building story around these random shows, which I really, really like. And I think that's a great way to keep people engaged for when they do go to TV. Yeah, definitely. Like with the Cody and uh, Sean Spears thing and, you know, other things that are just going on, the fact that they're building towards uh, title matches and things like that. I think it's very, very exciting and they're going about it the right way. Um, But look, not every show can be a 10 out of 10 hit. Oh no, of course not. And while this wasn't a bad show, it wasn't, you know, five stars, Meltzer, bollocks, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was a good wrestling show. And to be honest, that's all I want. I want an alternative yeah. to WWE because I'm still going to watch WWE, but I want an alternative, and that's given me what I need. So that's fine. Exactly. There's so much potential. Just please don't fuck it up. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they will. I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Speaking of WWE, uh-huh. uh, what was SmackDown were interesting this week? Hmm. Yeah, so... I don't know if we touched on it last week. We must have. It must have been announced by them. But, oh, of course, yeah, we did. Yeah, Bischoff yeah. and Heyman um, are now in charge of some... Well, they, they have a major role um, as part of Raw and SmackDown. Oh, uh, yeah. And Paul because Heyman... <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Paul Heyman was definitely... Um, definitely had his finger in the pie on Raw this mm-hmm. past week. Yeah, I'm trying to remember their vault. It's like executive producers, something like that. Something like that. They 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 they've got a major role anyway. Yeah. In sort cool. of the creative aspect of Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. And uh, so, well, it kicked off with like a uh, fourth count anywhere match with uh, Braun Strowman and uh, Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Um, and yeah, ended with um, uh, Braun spearing Bobby Lashley through the like light board at the back. Yep. And WWE fans were left over pyro. So yeah, put lots of pyro like say, oh, I've been electrocuted. Oh my god! Into the thing, Richard. Into the yeah. <laughs> and, and then Corey uh, yeah. Graves said, "Holy shit." Yeah, he said a bad word. <gasps> Naughty Corey. Yeah, but I, I, I loved it. I, <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, I loved it. I saw it and I was like, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen because <laughs> the explosions were just <laughs> just unreal. So much pyro. <laughs> so much pyro. Um, like the Corey Graves saying holy shit thing. And it had people talking. Yeah, it worked. And you know, that was definitely a Paul Heyman thing, 100%. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think uh, it's been to be honest. I actually think it was it's been confirmed recently. I read an article this morning. I think on uh, WrestleZone or some you know one of those sites. Um, that's basically saying the bits that Paul Heyman had a part in part of on Raw. 
and that was nice. one of them. Cool. Um, I do think they probably dwelled on it a bit too much during the show. During the show, it's like, oh, they've been quite enough to the, to, to the you know emergency room. Are they going to be okay? Blah blah blah. blah. It seems to go on and on all night. It's like, yeah, all right, we get it. The thing <laughs> is, I get I get why they did that because it was a major spot on the show, and if people yeah. sort of have tuned in, you know, part way through the show. Yeah, like, oh, what the right. fuck is this? What's going on? And like, or they've seen it on Twitter, like, oh, there's been this and this and this happened. And then they tune tune into the show, and I think that's why they keep showing it, just just to to show people what they've missed. Yeah, that's fair. Bad lie. Um, that's what else happened. Um, uh, Viking Raiders and uh, Joe uh, Samoa Joe beat the New Day, um, and then Joe like joked out Kofi at the end, just like mm-hmm. setting up their feud, which is good. Yep. Uh, Cesaro killed No Way Jose. Um, yeah, <laughs> rip. Poor, poor Jose, he's done nothing this whole time. Um, Cesaro is a, is a Paul Heyman is a massive Cesaro guy. Oh yeah, so uh, I fully uh, expect Cesaro to sort of shoot up the card a little bit. Good, he deserves it. Mm-hmm. Finally, uh, good, yeah, finally. Uh, street profits turn up for literally no reason and do nothing except be annoying. Yep, I love the street profits though. Um, what I don't love is the people winning the NXT championships and then turning up on Raw almost instantly. Mm. And then, so they're obviously going to fucking lose them or give them up on NXT. Exactly, yeah. They fought so hard to win the NXT titles, and now they're just on Raw with the NXT titles, which actually I was quite surprised about. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't understand that, but I do like the Street Profits, and I do think they uh, will do well on main roster. Side note, I think the Street Profits going to main roster also means Bianca Belair turning up on the main roster. Mm, that makes sense. I think it's her time. She, she's, she's done all that she can do in NXT except for win the women's championship. But now that time has passed. She's had her feud with Shayna for the title and not won it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen NXT this week. Uh, not this week. Was, I think it was last week's for the cage match. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it was last week. I haven't seen this week yet. But um, basically, um, it's, it's, it's a spoiler, but not a spoiler. She literally probably she just beat the shit out of some jobber on, on the show. Fair play. Uh, and it was awesome, and she's really impressive. But uh, I think her time in NXT is done, and I think she'll go to the main roster when the Street Profits uh, do go full time on Raw. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, then we had the Shane and Drew McIntyre thing, which I skipped because I don't care. Yeah. Um, the Undertaker interrupted and said something, something on the Take Your Souls. Yeah. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were the words he actually said, and then just went. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? So we had AJ, AJ and Ricochet doing a thing, both slapping each other in the face. Cool. Cool. All for uh, this feud, by the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. Big time. A uh, bunch of stuff happened. Lacey Evans beat Natalia with help from Corbin. Oh, snap. Yeah, I quite like them as a, a pairing, to be honest. Yeah, works. That's going to piss people off as well. Yep. Which is definitely <laughs> a new I mean, good thing. Jesus. This is, this is, people don't like Lacey Evans. People don't like Baron Corbin. I know what's going to fuck everyone off. Let's put them together. <laughs> yeah. Works for me. Yep, me too. I like it. I'm, not, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had uh, Seth and Becky Lynch teaming up against uh, Mike and Marie Kanellis. Oh, snap. One more. Neat. This was an interesting segment. Yeah. Um, so was... in the backstage interview, Maria said, how about me and my bitch take on you and yours? Uh, oh, snap. I mean, I th- <sighs> and then obviously, so they lost. Uh, uh, yeah. Maria announced she was pregnant just before that she was going to get the shit kicked out of her by Becky. Uh, yeah. Uh, then Mike Canellis tapped out to the disarm him. I guess so. Disarm sure. him. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then Maria was but hit a scathing promo on Mike Canellis. Poor Mike. Poor Mike. Just yeah. saying that you know, Maria saying that he's not man enough and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Now. Uh, this was a Paul Heyman thing as well. And I, I know oh, that yeah. he's a big fan of Maria. Um, and I think she's great on the microphone. Awful wrestler. Mm. Awful. Yeah. Um, Mike Canellis is bang average, but I like him. Yeah. I don't know where this goes, right? Uh, I I know that WWE was uh, 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 pissed off with Maria. Oh, really? Because the two of them have just recently signed new deals worth $250,000 a year. Nice. Each. Nice. And like just a matter of days later, if not the day after they signed those deals, Maria told them that she was pregnant. Oops. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. See ya. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, obviously, we don't know whether they just didn't know. Yeah, maybe. But it does seem a little bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, you know, they're on TV, and I, I think, I hope this is the start of something for Mike Kanellis. Like if Maria's going to just keep goading him every week, 
and you know just saying that he's not good enough and then one week he's just going to snap and just go mental and just start being awesome yeah that'd be cool that's like, like a like at the end like then it mad around here it's becky lynch maybe next time i'll ask becky to impregnate me oh oh we don't <laughs> <it. Whoa>. <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not. A that was, that was good. I think that was another Paul Heyman thing. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So I, cool. I think. I mean, that, that's at least that's that was my takeaway from a lot of people were like, "Oh, they've just buried Mike Canellis. They've just buried him. That's that's it. They've buried him because WWE pissed off with him." I didn't actually see it like that. I mean, I'm you know I do try and be quite open minded and think a little bit further ahead. Um, I I think that this could be the start of something for Mike Canellis. I, I think. I hope so. I, I, I do think this, Maria, I don't think it's a one off. Like, Maria buries her husband in front of the world and then they just vanish off TV. That doesn't make any sense. Exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, WWE even tweeted about Maria's pregnancy, saying that it was a, it was official and confirmed and all this sort of stuff. So, how pissed off can they be? Oh, you don't know what happens backstage. But I do think the pair of them will be on Raw again this coming week. And I think we'll see something fairly similar. Probably. But I think we'll start to see the cracks showing in Mike Kanellis and this will eventually lead to him snapping in some some way. For sure. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. For sure. I think this is this is the end of it. No, I don't. I don't at all. Cool. People are uh, too quick to assume, I think. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that they're getting buried because of um, you know, some sort of backstage heat that they may or may not have based on reports from people who may or may not have a clue. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, it's a bit just so, guesswork, isn't it? Oh, yeah, very, I heard from my source much, so, yeah. that uh, Mike and Ez is in trouble. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, yeah cheers. And it might not even be the case, <laughs> but, you, you know, I, but it might be at the same time, but I don't know. But, mm. you know, people, a lot of people, they're, they're very quick to sort of assume that it's not part of a bigger storyline and they've just sent them out there to embarrass them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think um, Paul Heyman sees something in both. Yeah, and I think that uh, because of that, and uh, because of the way that it the the whole thing went down, and how much of a big storyline it was on Raw, that was yeah. one of the big talking points of Raw. That was one of the yeah, big takeaways. Usually, a Michael Maria segment would have been thrown under the bus, and no one would have cared about it. But this was one of the big talking points of Raw. Yeah, uh, and again, this is another very smart thing that WWE have done is by you know, giving us a massive angle like that <laughs> out of nothing. And then it's given people something to talk about after the show had finished on the internet or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, the fact they put him against uh, Seth and Becky as well, like the two biggest stars I have. Mm, uh, yeah, it's a good sign of that for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I'd be interested to see what happens going forward with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, who else we have? We had Carmella beating Alexa less than like three seconds, which is weird. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what they're doing with Alexa. Like, she doesn't wrestle every week, and they keep putting with these weird segments where she like loses every three seconds or doesn't wrestle for whatever reason. I think he's trying to get Nikki mm. over. Yeah, that's fair. Because Nikki then beat Carmella. Oh, yeah, she did, yeah. So I think bored. it's <laughs> going to be... what All this is going to lead to Alexa turning on Nikki. No doubt yeah. about it. Oh, yeah, of course. That'll have a feud. Uh, and Nikki I think that's probably... the whole point of this. So I think um, the, 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 the one to... I think, I mean, Nikki Cross has been made to look great at the minute, which I'm really happy about. Yeah. But I think Alexa um, will be the one who comes out smelling her roses. Probably. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty good feud. I'm interested. I, I love the story. I love the character building. I think they did a really good job of it. Yeah. For a change. Too. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, so the main event was uh, AJ Styles versus Ricochet for the US title. Yeah. Uh, which AJ won very quickly. But Ricochet's foot was under the rope and the match had to get restarted. Interesting. Yeah. And then we had the uh, the Good Brothers come down. And, you know, the big side. Yep. Uh, and then they had a good, long, awesome match. Uh, and Ricochet won. Which is good. Good. Uh, yeah, very good match. And then uh, after the match, AJ Styles went to shake his hand, but then turned heel and beat the crap out of him, along with Carlos uh, Nansen. Good. Very cool. Right. Th- I mean, we, we had this conversation in the Discord about them two signing new contracts. I think it, mm. if it's not apparent now, it never will be. <laughs> they, I, you know, the fact that they've, they've, they were the, the final segment of Raw, turning heel, standing tall with AJ Styles, obviously one of WWE's biggest superstars, mm-hmm. um, is, sh- is enough for me to confirm that they basically signed new deals and yep. that this, the club or whatever they're going to call them going forward is going to be a thing. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm 100% behind it. Now, what they need to do is bring Fala, b- Fala? bring Finn Balor <laughs> back to Raw, mm. turn him heel. Oh, yes. 
and have him join the club. Now, what I could see happening is um, Ricochet, and I, th- I think what I think we'll get a six man at Extreme Rules. Interesting. Okay. So Gallows and Anderson and AJ Styles against Ricochet and two friends. Yeah, looks to me. One of those friends could be Finn Balor. Ooh. Maybe and then turns heel after the match. Then turns heel after then turns heel on Ricochet before the match ends. Eee, very nice. I like it. Uh, um, and th- th- I mean, that's what could happen. That's what I would love to happen. Mm, um, I'm not saying it will, and that's you know, but I'm I'm throwing that out there. I think that's what, what that would be quite cool because they haven't built on um, Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura, and I don't think they will. Maybe until after Extreme Rules. Yeah, yeah, they've been in one Extreme segment Rules backstage, a, yeah. and like that was it. <laughs> this is a week on Sunday, and I don't think they'll throw that match together in just a week. I think it needs more build, and I think it'll get it. But um, I, yeah, I can see, I can, I can see Nakamura with that belt. Good happen, yeah. And I think we see a, maybe a face Nakamura taking on a heel Finn Balor. Mm. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things that could actually happen. Uh, a lot of shaking up that could go on, and. Um, I, th- I would love to see Finn Balor a heel. And they've got nothing to lose at this point by doing that, by the way, turning him heel. No, uh, no he's doing nothing with him. Yeah, got to do nothing with him, with him as a face. So why not? No, absolutely nothing. And it's just yeah. running dry. So yeah. stick him as a heel and just have them kill everything on the roster. It'd be awesome. Good yeah, God, it'd be so good. So good. Yeah. I'm so glad. yeah, that's uh, that's what I, I that, that's what I would like to see happen. Yeah, me too. I'm glad Gallas and Anderson are finally getting some sort of push as well because I've been doing nothing for so long. Yeah, Let's we need a good. dominant faction. Factions are so missed in WWE. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, can you imagine um, what the hell is it called? Uh, and Adam, uh, Adam Colton and Co. Undisputed oh, Era versus the era? Yeah. Yeah, versus the club. Oh, good God. Oh, my God. This leaves. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing. WWE has so much potential, and now it's time to, to put that potential in motion. Yes, absolutely. That's so, so many good stars. Yeah. So, I mean,. <laughs> Yeah, turn Nakamura face again. Um, you know, have him save Ricochet or whatever from the beatdown that Finn Balor and the club are going to give him. Um, and ju- just one moment like that would make Shinsuke Nakamura popular again. Yeah. Bring him back into the fold and make him popular again. Yeah. They, 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 they could do some sort of a, a double turn during the match at uh, Extreme Rules. You don't see very often, but it could be cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, look, there, there is so many variables that could take place and make it awesome again. Mm. Um, it's just pulling the trigger. And I think, I mean, look, Rome wasn't built in a day. And these things yeah. aren't going to take place overnight with Bischoff and Heyman and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, we will we will start to see things creeping in over the next couple of weeks or so. Yeah, for sure. Good so uh, I'm, excited. I'm excited, yeah. Finally. <laughs> well, for ages now, it's, I've been like, Oh, it's time to watch War. Oh man, I've got to watch War this week. Uh, okay, but now it's like, oh, okay, got to watch War. Like, mm, could, could be interesting. Cool. Yes, yeah. See, I'm actually excited for War on Monday. I want to see what's. I want to see what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Good. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> and nice. it was a good episode of Raw without a Brock cash in tease. Now yeah, I know exactly. Heyman was backstage, sort of saying that Brock Lesnar could be there, but he wasn't, and there was no sort of music or anything like that. It was just, yeah. Yeah, as I should be. Put, put that in the background. Let let people forget about it. So when it does cash in, it'll be an actual surprise. Absolutely. That is ex- exactly what they should do. Let, yeah. Make things happen so that people forget about Brock. And then when it happens, people are like, oh, shit, I forgot about this. And then he cashes in and wins whichever belt he's going to win. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. So that's Raw. The SmackDown was equally interesting, I thought. I just start, sorry to, to put in here with this. But that's this right. is another reason why I think... Um, the the Paul Heyman being in charge of Raw is mm-hmm. another reason why I see Brock going to SmackDown oh, to separate the two, mm. so that okay. Paul Heyman can focus on his work, doing what he's ever, whatever he's doing on Raw, and then Brock can go and be the champion on SmackDown and turn up whenever he needs to turn up. Interesting. That'd be a good swerve as well because everyone sort of expects expects him to go after Seth. So yeah. Be, so when he goes after Kofi or whoever's the champion at the time, uh, that'll be yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I think that's what I, 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 that's the way I personally see it going. Yeah, especially with SmackDown going to Fox and Fox wanting the big stars. There mm. are not many bigger than Lesnar, so yeah, exactly. Plus, Roman is on uh, SmackDown, mm-hmm. so eventually Roman can take the belt off Brock, and finally, we you know without you know now Roman's better, we can finally get the Roman Reigns build that we should have had a, a while ago, and it just never happened for whatever reason. Yeah, probably at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I see what you mean. Uh, cool. So it's SmackDown. 
Uh, yeah, interesting. So we had Kevin Owens turning face or doing his uh, Kevin Owens show segment. Mm-hmm. He's only just turned heel as well, which is <laughs> yeah, uh, a weird yeah. thing. I think uh, I mean, they were originally wanted him as a face, but then something happened with one of the guys doing the person got injured. So like, well, we need a heel. Okay, well, got perfectly good Kevin Owens here. Let's turn him heel. I thought, yeah. oh, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, I think, him uh, from what I read, Kevin Owens like really wants to run as a face. Yeah, that's fair. I, I'm fine with it. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so there's Kevin, Kevin Owens show with Shane and Drew, um, which were interrupted by Dolph Ziggler, of all people. Mm. He said, oh, it should have been me. So blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Kevin Owens was like, yeah, it should have been you eight years ago, but it wasn't. Then it was a little bit. Then it wasn't again. And never will be again. <laughs> <It's all> like, <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, they both won the title shot, but were denied. But he got put in the tag team match together against Heavy Machinery, and the winners of that match get put into a tag team title match at Stream Wars. Yeah. Which is cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Then we had... Uh, Next match, we had Danny Ryan versus uh, Big E, which is fun. And uh, Danny Ryan won after help with uh, Eric Rowan. Yeah. Cool. Good result. That was cool as well. Yeah, enjoyed that. Good, good. I got Bailey beating Nikki Cross, um, which is fine. Okay, yep. yeah. Nothing special. Yeah. Um, earlier, then we had uh, Kofi and Joe having a friendly discussion in the ring. Mm. Uh, Joe wanted a handshake, but instead, gets a middle finger. <gasps> oh, snap. Oh, he- and they cut it off. Corey Graves said, holy shit on Raw. Yeah, I know. It's weird. But they did, we did see it. I we were supposed to be able to see it because it was like obscured by Joe's head. Then the camera turned and we saw it. So I'm not sure. Mm. 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 Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really want Joe to win, but I don't think he will. Yeah, I mean, I love it as Joe as WWE champion. That'd be but, so good. But then it blows my Brock theory out of the water and I want to be right. Yeah. Unless... So I want to be right and I want Joe to be the champion all at the same time. Yeah, unless Brock doesn't cash in for like months and maybe Joe loses to someone else in the future. And then Brock has a year on whoever that is. I mean, Brock has a year, so... Yeah, exactly. So, hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, We had Andrade and Apollo having a really good match. Yeah, cool. Um, Great to see Apollo um, on, you know, actually having a a match. But, um, you know, as always, he loses, so... Yeah. Um, I like the Tanina Vega, like, how we commanded him on the outside. Yeah, she's good, man. I like her. I like her. So good. Me too. So good. Um, Then we had Ember Moon versus Mandy Rose. Ember Moon won. Yep, fine. Bit of a nothing match, really. I don't really understand. I don't really understand where some of the SmackDown Women's Division is at the minute. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, the title picture is very much Alexa, Nikki Cross, Bailey, mm-hmm. um, and I, you know, then on, then on Raw, obviously, you've got Becky and Lacey doing their back and forth for the title. So the rest of the Women's Division is a little bit in limbo at the minute, which is a shame. But um, I'm sure it will start to take to, to take shape eventually. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but it means great. It's just super weird, like that. At least yeah. on the ladder was. But I like Mandy as well. Thingy. Yeah, this is great. She's you know underrated, I think. I think so. Yeah, I, I don't mind Mandy at all. I think she's fine. Yeah, I mean, people, they're PC. They like a pretty face and like, so, ah, yeah, just another one, another good, good looking lady who can't wrestle. But uh, no, she has got some good moves. She got some good moves. She can wrestle. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think she can wrestle, and I I, yeah. I I don't really have a problem with Mandy Rose at all. No, it's all good. And then we had a weird segment with uh, Shelton Benjamin backstage. It's like, <laughs> so what do you think of? Uh, the WWE Championship match at Scream Wars, and he's kind of smiled and slid off the screen, which is strange. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Uh, I, I like Shelton Benjamin. Yeah, me too. But I don't know what this is. <laughs> so, this is just... Incredible athlete, done nothing since he's come back, and that's a real shame. But um, I, I would love to see Shelton Benjamin sort of featured more and, you know, having more wrestling matches and just get, you know, bump up the card a little bit. Yeah, do stuff. Yeah. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. Do stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'll be okay with that, for sure. And then we had the main event, which was uh, Heavy Machinery versus uh, Owens and Ziggler. Mm-hmm. Uh, Heavy Machinery won after a uh, accidental super kick from uh, Dolph Ziggler to Owens. And then uh, they, uh, Heavy Machinery got the uh, compactor and uh, won the match. So they're going to be at, uh, in, in the tag team match at Dream Worlds. Yeah, then that's fine. Yeah. I want actual sense. tag teams fighting for the tag team titles. Yeah. Um, and it also forwards the feud between Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler, which will probably get at Extreme Rules as well, which on paper is a great match. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think Heavy Machinery will win the tag team titles. Mm. Yeah, who was in the match? Uh, Heavy Machinery, Danny Bryan, Rowan, and... Uh, New Day, is it? Ah, New Day, that was it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so obviously next week we'll do Extreme Rules predictions because it is a week from tomorrow, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we'll do that next week as well. Um, just a quick one: Who do you think is going to wrestle Alistair Black at Extreme Rules? Ooh, um, good question. I would have said Ricochet if he wasn't already in the feud with AJ, because um, they were tag team when they first came in, weren't they? Yeah, I think it's Bray Wyatt, and I think they join forces. Oh. I don't think they fight each other. Interesting. 
Because the reason I say this is because Bray Wyatt has obviously been saying, all you need to do is let me in. Mm. And Alistair Black has been waiting for somebody to knock on his door, and somebody did. Oh, yeah. And all Ooh. he needs to do is let them in. I like it. That's, that's very clever. I like it. So if that... I mean, to be honest, that should be absolutely killer. And I would love to see the two of them in a feud with one another. Uh, sorry, not. I would love to see the two of them work together. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And I think <laughs> we just need factions everywhere. So we, we've got the club on Raw. and We're going to have this weird faction with Alistair Black and Bray White, which would be great. Mm. And yeah, just I think that I think that's what it will be because I don't want Alistair Black to lose and I don't want Bray White to lose. So I think they don't fight. I think they team up. Yeah, makes sense to me. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. 100%. So, AEW was good. WWE was better this week. So, mm. the, the landscape of wrestling is looking good and healthy, which is great. Yes, I'm actually excited for Extreme Wolves, which is... Yeah, me too. Yeah, <laughs> makes a change. Absolutely, because I wasn't excited for Stomping Grounds at all, but then it turned out no. to be a fun show. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Good stuff. Great. So, we'll be back next week with Extreme Rules predictions, which yep. um, I'm looking forward to. But for now... This has been episode 98 of the Games and Grabs podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Saturday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Sonny. I'm Finn. And we'll see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Divas.